Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar on preparing SYA students for college. I'm Megan Roof, the resident director at SYA Spain here in Zaragoza, and we're very lucky to have with us the SYA Spain College Counseling Liaison, Pauline Pazowski. Pauline's been working at SYA Spain since 2005, so she has a great deal of experience and gets to know our students really well each year. During the webinar, we're gonna be talking about the SYA experience um, and how it helps students prepare for college and beyond, and also about the college counseling process on the ground on our campuses. I just wanna remind everyone that while Pauline is the SYA Spain college counseling liaison, we have a college counseling liaison in Italy and also in France. And so everything that we're saying this evening applies to all three of our campuses. I also wanna remind everyone that there is a chat box that you can leave questions in. So we'll try to get to questions at the end. And if we don't get to all of the questions, please reach out to admissions and they will be able to connect you with one of our college counseling liaisons in order to have your question answered. So before we get into the details of our program and some of the nuts and bolts things that we do, I wanted to ask you, Pauline, if you could just talk a little bit about why you enjoy working with SYA students and how they grow during their time here. Yes. Hi, everyone. Um, well, I would say I'm just so impressed with our students. The fact that during high school, that these young adults, let's say, are inspired and motivated and willing to take that risk to come abroad. I think that's that's amazing. Um, I wish I'd been so brave. <laughs> um, they're such a diverse group of students with varied backgrounds and interests, and they have so much to offer. And so one of my favorite things is really getting to work with them individually and getting to know each student. Um, and on the college counseling side of things, they tend to be very prepared and responsible and willing to work through that process responsibly, which is also great. We do also see them grow a lot <laughs> over the course of the year. Um, they're coming into a situation where they're having to overcome many challenges, um, including all of the newness surrounding them, the culture, the language. And through this through this process, we see that they gain a greater sense of self, um, self-confidence, independence, and it's it's wonderful to work with them and to see you know all of these changes happen over the course of the year. Great, thank you. Um, I just would echo everything that Pauline said, and I think it's also important since we're having this conversation about the SY experience and preparing for college is just to point out that the actual experience itself is a great preparation for college, for the application process, but also just for life in general. Um, like Pauline said, it's really impressive that our students make the choice just to do SYA. It really sets them apart from the rest of the, the high schoolers uh, back in the US because it's not an easy decision to leave home, leave what's comfortable and put yourself into a situation that requires you to be in a lot of new situations and really adapt. And so I think we all know the world is changing really quickly. Um, there's a lot of information out there and articles and podcasts about the skills that, that our students are going to need in the future in order to you know, be successful and happy humans um, as they move through their lives. And all of these articles, there's one in Forbes that I really like that's called um, the 10 vital skills you will need for the future of work. And all of the things that they list really match up to the skills that our students are gaining while they're here. Things like critical thinking and creative thinking, problem solving, um, communication skills, what they call cultural intelligence, you know, recognizing and being empathetic with people from different places and this ability to be adaptable and be able to embrace change and things that are different. And so the experience itself helps students stand out within, you know, amongst their peers in the college application process, but it also helps them be better students and be better college students and then also be more prepared prepared for their future um, careers and lives. So, okay, so let's talk a little bit about um, exactly what we do here at SYA related to college counseling. So of course our students are coming from many different home schools and they have their own college counseling programs at their home schools. Our sophomores and juniors go back into their home schools to finish, um, to finish out their high school career. So can you talk a little bit about how the liaisons that we have on our campuses are working with the homeschools. Yes, so um, 
you know, the seniors who are coming to SYA are starting the college process back home in the States. And then our juniors will be starting the process with us and then transitioning back to their home schools. And so we do reach out to and work with the college counselors at the students' home school to help them make this transition smoothly um, going to and from the home school and SYA. With the seniors, we reach out to the college counselor right off. Um, you know, the seniors will have started the process back at their home schools in the States, and they'll be moving well into the application process when they arrive. And so we make sure that we touch base with our college counselor at home so that the college counselor and I both can be supporting, you know, our SYA seniors and wrapping up the college process successfully, um, getting all of their applications in on time. And then as far as juniors go, um, just before or after winter break, we're going to be starting the college process with them. And, you know, at that time, we reach out to um, their college counselors at home in case they have any questions, sharing information about the process and how that works at SYA. And then after, you know, we wrap up the year, we send a letter back to those college counselors talking about, you know, sending notes from our individual college meetings with those students, testing transcripts and so on, so that the college counselor back home can be supporting the student um, with the information and the groundwork we've laid here at SYA. Perfect. And so you already kind of split the two groups, the main groups that you're working with as our seniors and our juniors. So can you talk a little bit more? We know that, of course, senior year is the year that you're actually applying. Um, so that's really important. And we, we always have seniors each year. So you, can you talk a little bit about how you work with the seniors and how that process works? Yes, yeah, so the seniors arrive well into the college process. Um, and many of them have early deadlines, potentially as early maybe as November 1. Um, and so what I try to do, what we try to do is get started with them within the first couple of days. Um, I like to pull them together as a group. And that's also good because then of course the seniors know who the other seniors are and they definitely provide, you know, not only do I provide support for them, they also provide support for each other. And then immediately after that start individual meetings as well. Um, so I like to check in frequently with the seniors to check on their progress. Um, you know, make sure they've got their college list finalized, uh, you know, see where they're at in their applications, if they've, you know, if they need to do more testing, SATs, for example, or subject tests, or if they wrap that up and they need to send it. And so basically just making sure that all those little pieces of the puzzle are coming together. Um, I also reach out immediately to their college counselor, like I mentioned before, after that individual meeting um, back in the States to make sure that you know the information I have and the information they have and all of the the documents that we have to send to the colleges get sent on time um, and primarily in the fall that's what my focus is is really just working with the seniors dedicating my time to them supporting them sometimes that's giving feedback on essays or reviewing their application helping them apply for financial aid whatever that might be that's what my primary focus is coordinating, you know, with the college counselor at home and making sure that those applications go in successfully. I will Great. add okay. <laughs> just yeah. really quickly that, you know, even though in the fall I am primarily working with seniors, you know, the college counseling office door is, is always open to juniors and sophomores as well. If they have any questions, because sometimes, you know, questions come up, you know, early on for them about the college counseling process or about testing. So, okay. That. Great. And that's true. Pauline's door is right next to mine. And I always see students going in and popping in just to ask a quick question or to, you know, show her an article that they found about a, about a college that they are interested in. So it's, it's a very um, familial atmosphere in general here at school, which is great. Mm -hmm. So one last thing about seniors, what would your biggest piece of advice be to seniors who are coming to do SYA? <laughs> So I would say I would, well, I would strongly encourage all seniors to start early um, and complete as much of the application process as possible. Um, you know, they could be starting on things as early as their junior spring, although I'm not sure that all students do, but definitely from that moment all the way up to the time that they come to Spain, they have, you know, plenty of time that I would say 
or if they don't have a lot of time because they're busy with a lot of activities, definitely carve out time to begin to complete the application, to write the essays, revise the essays, and arrive to Spain with the majority of the work done. There would be two reasons. One would be just to be able to take advantage of all of the, of the new things, experiences, the city, their host family, friends, um, that this opportunity will, will provide to them, as well as focusing on you know, language acquisition, learning about the culture. Um, without having to say I have to go home and work on my essays or my college applications. And then the other reason would be simply just what we see in students who do come with most of the work done, their stress levels are considerably lower. They're able to, to relax more, let's say, and enjoy their time here. And Great. so I definitely, you know, again, would recommend doing as much as seniors can pre-departure. Um, and then, you know, what's left, of course, we're going, I'm going to be here to support them and wrapping all of that up. All right, great. And yes, I would just echo all of that because it's, I mean, all of the months that students are here are exciting. Um, and there's a lot of, of growth and change all throughout. And, you know, there's certain periods of time that are busier than others, but particularly right when students get here, those first few months, there's just so many, so many new exciting things to do. And, time to spend with your host families and things like that. So the last thing students want to do is create a situation where they have to really be focusing primarily on getting these essays done or their applications done when they could have um, gotten a lot of that work done in the summer. So, okay, so let's transition into talking a little bit more about what we do with the junior students. So juniors in the fall, I think, you know, the one major thing that they do is take the PSAT, let's say as far as testing and college counseling goes. Um, they'll take the PSAT in October, uh, but the college counseling process, you know, looking at colleges and having a, a general assembly and individual meetings get started just before or after winter break with a group assembly to introduce the college counseling process in general, and then more specifically how that works at SYA. Um, again, I mentioned, you know, they kind of begin that with the PSAT, but we, you know, really start talking about colleges there just before winter break or after. And then just after that big kickoff meeting, we have individual meetings. I'll start to meet with the students individually. Um, they're required to meet with me at least for two hour long meetings. Um, if I feel like the student should meet with me more, or if the student would simply like to meet with me more, or if they have questions, again, you know, we'll find time to meet um, to make sure that we clarify all their doubts and that they're well prepared to transition back home and continue the college counseling process then. But what we do in those individual meetings, we will look at the students' transcripts, testing, activities, coursework, talk about their strengths. Um, in different classes. I think most importantly, what we want them to do is identify what they are looking for in a college, um, do some self-exploration and identify criteria of what they feel like the ideal college scenario would be for them, whether it's, you know, they're really interested in a certain area of study and they want to, want to have, you know, a certain major at that college, a specific program, it could be extracurricular activities possibly the atmosphere, location, or size would also be important to those students. And so those are things that we're going to be talking about and looking at. Um, with that criteria, they can begin to search and research and identify colleges they feel would be a good fit. And with you know, those colleges as they emerge, starting to build a college list, um, the idea or our goal would be to ensure that students are well prepared to transition back to their home school um, and meet with their college counselor and continue moving through the college counseling process into the summer into the fall. Um, and I'll just add, I think I mentioned this before, that we'll be sending college counseling notes um, to the homeschool counselor along with that initial college list. Um, and testing and, and other information that would be helpful for the college counselor to help support the student when they go back into the state. Okay, great, thank you. Um, I just wanna clarify, we have a couple questions coming in and someone asked about if we're based in France or Spain. We are both um, here in Spain, but I just wanna make sure everyone knows that 
everything that we're talking about applies to all three of our campuses. So all three of our college counseling liaisons follow the same kind of handbook that we have related to our college counseling program. So everything that we're saying is also true on our other campuses. Okay, so not the most favorite part of the puzzle, but one piece of the puzzle of the college application process is testing. So can you talk a little bit about how testing works while students are here? Yes, so we do offer all of College Board testing, which would be the PSAT, um, the SAT, the SAT subject test, and the AP exams. I'm happy to say that we do that testing at our schools, so students don't have to go to another site or to another school to take those exams or those tests, um, and I think that's really nice for the students. The College Board testing is all all of the anticipated dates for those tests are online. And so that's something that, you know, if, if you have any questions, of course you can ask us, but you can also go onto the College Board website and find the dates. The PSAT is in October, that's in the fall, and that's something that juniors would be taking. Um, and then seniors, most of the fall testing otherwise is for seniors. They have an October, a November, and a December test date for SAT and SAT subject tests. And so many seniors come and they've already completed all of their testing, but if they, you know, decide they want to take the SAT again, for example, they would be able to take that in the fall. Juniors, the typical plan is um, that they test in the spring, except for the PSAT, which is in October. The SAT, they would typically take in March and the subject test would be in May. Um, and the subject test, that's when the language exams are offered. And so most students opt to take those and often another subject test as well as many colleges require two of those. Okay. And then as far as the AP exams, um, we will be offering at SYA or we do offer at SYA an AP calculus course. And so the students who are taking that course would be taking the AP exam and the AP exams are in May. It's the first couple of weeks of May. Um, again, all of those test dates are on the College Board website if you want to look at the specific dates. But um, And those are right now are anticipated dates, but typically from one year to the next, those, those stay, those are accurate. Okay, um, great. I, I was just going to... Uh, oh, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to chime in real quickly about the APs um, that we do have generally a small group of students who will take the calculus AP exam. And then we strongly encourage all of our students to take the Spanish AP exam because mm -hmm. their proficiency level obviously just you know skyrockets while they're here living abroad. And so while our class itself is not an AP class, students are really encouraged to do the exam and we will offer some review sessions, just some little kind of you know tips beforehand so that students feel prepared um, but generally it's not necessary anyhow to be taking a specific class that's targeted towards a test because our students language skills grow so incredibly while they're here and then any other tests we do have students who will sign up for other AP tests but we aren't preparing students for those those are students who might opt to spend some of their own time um, prepping for a different test that we, of a class that we don't offer. Since most of our classes are taught in Spanish, um, they're not AP classes, so. And then I had one more question. The other exam that we all know about is the ACT. So can you talk a little bit about um, how, it, how SYA, well, why SYA can't offer the ACT, I guess I should say. So um, the ACT was paper-based. In internationally in the past um, and ACT decided to move to web-based testing um, and we just don't have the capacity to offer the ACT in that format so you know we'd recommend that students who wish to take the ACT plan ahead um, to either take that before or after attending SYA ideally because they can take it in paper format yeah okay great thank you and I mean, I think the other benefit, of course, of doing that, of taking the test before or after is it's just not the way students generally want to spend their time while they're here is doing a lot of test prep. Um, so, of course, you know, there's time that people that students build in to prepare themselves for different things. But when you can get that kind of thing taken care of a little bit before, a little bit after, that's also um, alleviates a little bit of that stress that that happens around testing. All right, so a couple last questions and then we'll get to a couple questions that are coming in through the chat. So 
Um, can you talk a little bit about the Naviance accounts that our students have here at SYA? Yes. So um, parents and students will have access to an SYA Naviance account. And uh, that has resources for the students to use throughout the college counseling process, primarily um, as a search engine. And the search engines, you know, have the students select criteria when they're searching for colleges. So sometimes that helps students identify that criteria that's important to them as well. Students can save a college list on it. There are some questionnaires or assessments to explore careers, strengths. So um, it's definitely a great resource. And I will also add that some students will have an account at their home school. Um, if so, that will remain their primary account, but they definitely will have access to both and can use both. It's, it's just simply that some, uh, well, sorry. <laughs> it's that the homeschool account is often used for submitting documents. And so students, if their college counselor is asking them to use that at the homeschool, will want to be putting things on there as well. It's not something that we use though for submitting documents. Okay, great, thank you. And then another important piece is recommendation letters. And so can you talk about how we um, prepare students or teachers as well with our recommendation re letter process? Yes, so typically colleges will ask for two teacher recommendations. Um, and one of those is most often an SYA teacher. The other is often the home, uh, teacher from the student's homeschool. And so nearing the end of the year, we ask juniors to decide on the SYA teacher they would like to ask. Um, and of course, ask that teacher. And then we explain the process of how to follow up with the teacher in the fall to make sure that letter gets to where it needs to be to get to the colleges. Perfect, thank you. All right, um, so, we have a couple questions in the chat box. If anyone else has any other questions that they'd like to add, please go ahead and do that now. Um, you can also, if, if it's not specific, you know, too specific about the college process, that's okay as well. And we're both here and happy to answer any other questions people might have about the program. Um, so one of the questions that is here that I think we can both chime in about um, is, do colleges view extracurricular activities differently if a student attends SYA for their junior year? For example, I'm an editor of my school newspaper, but I likely wouldn't hold a senior editor position during senior year if I were abroad for junior year. Would colleges look down upon this? So I can kind of give my thoughts um, about this. And then if you have anything to chime in, Pauline. I would say, I think, um, the SYA experience is set students apart in a way that while it is fantastic to be the senior editor of a newspaper, the opportunities that you have here to be involved in different kinds of extracurriculars um, that will help you, you know, bond with people your own age who are Spanish, you know, there are ways that you could write here as well. Um, you could be an SYA um, campus reporter for us as well, so you can kind of keep yourself active with that interest that you have, but that all of the things that would happen being here abroad for your junior year and all of the opportunities that you would have with extracurriculars, I think would most definitely outweigh not having one specific role that you might not have access to during your senior year if you were gone during your junior year. Anything else about that, Pauline? No, I completely agree <laughs> with everything that you said. And I think, you know, um, it's, it's something that if you wanted to address it in an interview, if you wanted to address it with a college in some way, you definitely could, you know, explain why I went away and therefore I couldn't continue with this. But I absolutely would say that the opportunities and the experiences outweigh, you know, I think it's a pro to come, definitely 100%, yeah. Right, I would say, I mean, I'm just thinking of a student last year who actually ended up doing some interviews and work with the local newspaper here. Mm -hmm. um, for some work related to immigration. And so there's so many great things that you could do and that you could seek out here that are related to pretty most interests, I would say that our students have at their home schools as well, um, that would just really kind of highlight even further that interest because you're doing it in a new place, you're likely doing it in another language as well, which just um, is an even more you know difficult thing to do and more, more impressive, I would say to colleges. So thank you for that question. Um, another question, do you expect there to be more seniors than usual next year? Um, 
This is a great question and the answer is yes. Um, we have a number of students who were planning on coming this year who were juniors for this year and have deferred to come as their senior, um, to come during their senior year. And so we were actually just talking about this, the, um, the three resident directors, we were talking about this with admissions recently about, um, and with our college counselors about the fact that we're gonna have more seniors than we generally would. And we're completely excited and, and prepared for that. I think, I mean, I, I don't think there's a wrong year to come to SYA. Um, there's positives for all of the years, but I think that there is a really nice transition for seniors into university because they've, they're kind of going from this really new, exciting experience to another one. Um, and so I think that's one of the, the things that seniors really enjoy. Um, they report back to us that the transition into college for them, it often feels a lot easier than it might be for their friends um, who, who hadn't had this kind of experience right before. Right. Okay, um, let's see. Another question. As a senior at SYA, will colleges look at you in comparison to students at your home school or SYA? Uh, yeah, so I mean, I think a bit of both. I think, you know, they'll, they will have seen what you did at your home school um, and, and that will be part of the process. Definitely there continues to be in many cases, part of the application is completed by the homeschool counselor. That initial letter of recommendation is typically written by the homeschool counselor. And so um, in that way, your school is also represented in the three years you would have done prior to coming to SYA in your application but they will also be taking into account um, SYA and, and this experience as part of your application, definitely. So I think a bit of both would be the answer for me. Hmm. Right, right. And I mean, I think also, I mean, it, it depends on where you're applying and um, your homeschool, but the it's a very kind of select group of students who do SYA. And so it's, all, it's something that does set you apart having that on your, um, you know, your college uh, application. Okay, I think it looks like we've got time for one more question. So are sophomores involved in the college guidance program besides testing? So I would say typically, you know, it, most students start the college process their junior year and most schools have students start the college process their junior year. Um, and so that's, you know, more or less a, format we follow as well. If a sophomore has questions about college counseling and wants to come in and meet with me, wants to talk about anything, you know, I'm happy to speak with um, sophomores as well. But I think that they're in the position that they can also really just focus on, you know, being a sophomore in this way, not having to be so involved in the college process, taking advantage of all the opportunities while they're here, um, which other students will get to do too. Um, but they definitely are in a different place to be able to say, okay, I'm just going to enjoy my year and set the college process aside. You know, a lot of times sophomores take the PSAT, for example, um, most do actually, but they're, they don't have to be involved in the college process. And so, you know, I would say I'm certainly happy to speak with any sophomore that has questions um, about the process or, you know, whatever, meet with them. But at the same time, it's not something that we just will initially go out and have them meet with us those two times. We won't follow any specific, let's say, um, plan with the sophomores. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it tends to be that with sophomores, the major I would say the majority of sophomores in each year, you know, there's never generally a large number of sophomores that come. Um, it just depends on that student. You know, there might be a sophomore who's really interested in, in having some conversations with Colleen and then other sophomores who are just completely happy um, just waiting until their junior year to start the process. So it's, we kind of adapt to what the, the specific sophomores are interested in. Okay, well, we are Hit, heading towards a half hour. So I'm gonna just answer one last question that was here about the SAT and ACT, just um, to clarify that the SAT is taken 
on campus at each of our campuses, which is really nice because it's in a space that our students know, um, they're comfortable here at our schools. And so th that test is administered here on our campuses, either in Spain, France, or Italy. And because the ACT is now web-based internationally, the paper test is not available internationally anymore. We are no longer able to um, proctor that test because we don't have the, the means to, we don't have computer labs that you would need in order to do that. So students are encouraged to take, if they're taking the ACT to take it either before they arrive or when they get back um, the summer after their, their SYA year. Okay, well, thank you so much, Pauline, um, for all of your wonderful answers and information about our college process. Um, I just wanna remind everyone, if you have any other questions, please reach out to our admissions team. And it was so nice to have all of you with us. And I hope that you have a nice afternoon where you are probably. So thank you so much. Thank you all. Bye.